Hey everyone, this is Mason from FilterGrade. Today we're going to learn the basics of Adobe Premiere Pro in just about 15 minutes. At first glance, this program can seem really intimidating, but it's really just the program can do so much. The basics are quite easy and you'll be editing before you'd know it. So to start with, we're going to create a project. Just click new project and I'm gonna call it tutorial. And then I'm just going to save it to this folder in which I have some footage that I'll be using for this tutorial. And that's all you have to do. Don't worry about this other stuff. Click OK. And here we have the default editing workspace. So you'll see these four boxes here. These are called panels. Uh, there are other panels in the program, but the, these are the default ones and the ones that you use the most often. This big one right here is the program monitor. That is where you will be able to play back the video in your project. The timeline is sort of the visual representation of the clips that are uh, in your project. This bin over here is the project bin where you will find all of your clips and folders full of clips and things like that. And this is the source monitor where you can watch your clips without them actually being in your timeline. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open up our folder that has some footage in it. And we've got two files here. And the easiest way to import things like this is just to click and drag. And they'll import and they'll be here. Uh, the other way to do it, you go to file, import, and then search. But that generally takes a little bit longer. Clicking and dragging is probably the easiest thing to do. Now, we only have two clips here, but if we wanted to add more, then we want to do some organization. You'd want to click new bin. A bin is a folder, and you might call that, let's call it main footage. And then we can just drag those things into the bin can double click on it to open it up and see what's in there. And then you can see we have our bin, main footage, and then our main project that has all of our bins and footage in it. Uh, to add a clip to the timeline, simply click and drag. And then here we see the timeline. At the top, you can see how much time the clip is taking up. And then here we can see it playback. So if we play it back, it'll start playing. You can see this, the playhead moving across the timeline as it plays. Now, if you would rather watch a clip before inserting it into the timeline, you can do that. If you double click on it, it'll show up here in the source monitor. You can move the playhead and play it from here, which brings us to creating a sequence. So as I said, you can drag in a clip and it'll add it to the sequence, but you can also use the source monitor to refine the exact clip you're gonna bring in. So you can move the playhead to your desired position and click mark in, and then move it somewhere else and mark out. And now instead of this 32 second clip, we can drag this in and it's only the eight second clip that we defined in the source monitor. You can also drag just video or audio. This one is video, this one is audio. And it'll drag them individually onto your timeline. So let's drag the full clip back on. And then one thing you'll notice is the name up here. It's just the name of the file that we dragged in. That likely is not going to be what you want. So if you double click on the text on the new file it created for that, you can clear it. And we're just going to call it tutorial main timeline, just for better organization. When we drag in this clip, it's going to give the project the same settings as that clip. So if we go to sequence, sequence settings, we can see that it's in 4K resolution at 25 frames per second. And if you want to adjust that, like if you want to make it 1920 by 1080, or you want to make it uh, a vertical for an Instagram story or something, then you can change that after inserting a clip or before, then you can edit to that size. Now we're gonna talk about some of the tools on the side here. Only a few of them are super important at this time. Uh, let's start by doing a basic cut. So the first thing that you can do to make a cut is actually a trim. So you can grab either end of a clip and this red arrow symbol will show up and you can just drag it from either end and it'll shorten it up. It's also a good time to mention that the playhead serves as a uh, as a snap if you have this magnet tool on. If you don't, then 
it will not. But it's helpful to have the magnet on, that way you can use the playhead to precisely decide where you want something. And you can drag and it'll snap to that position. So that's one way to cut if you're planning to trim off an entire section. But if you just want to split something, you can take the razor tool here and just select somewhere. And the same thing with the playhead. If you move the playhead, it snaps to that. You'll be able to cut at that exact spot. Then you can move these independently and even delete something if you'd rather delete something in the middle. And then you have two clips that come together. Now we're going to talk about visibility. If we drag both of these clips onto the timeline, we can see that only the top one is visible. These are layers, and as such, a top layer will cover a bottom layer. If you want to see what's on the bottom layer, you can click the little eyeball tool here, and it'll not show this layer anymore. Similarly for audio, if you click mute, it will mute that audio track. If you click solo, it'll make it so that that is the only one that you can hear and all your other audio tracks will be muted. There's a couple ways that you can edit. One of the things you can do is, as we showed, previewing it in the source monitor, trimming the bit that you want, and dragging that into your timeline. That's one way to edit. Another way to edit is to create a master timeline with all of your footage, in which case you might put all these things next to each other and then start whittling away until you have the best footage. So you might not want the end of this, you might cut that off, and then you want to attach this, and then you might be happy with that. The other way to do it, which is similar, is to have both of these clips in here, and then create a new sequence. If you want to do that, one of the easiest ways to do it is to right click on a piece of footage and new sequence from clip. And now we have a new sequence named after that file, of course, that put that in. Now that's just the easiest way to create a new sequence with some of the same settings as your footage. But now from here, if we want to grab the last few seconds of this, we can select it, copy, and then paste it into here. And now we've retained all the footage in this main timeline, a footage dump, if you will. And then we can do our main edit over here. So those are three different ways you could consider editing. The next thing we're going to look at is transitions. So if we go to the effects tab here, you can see video transitions. I'm just going to show a simple dissolve, that is the default transition. And all you have to do is drag it to one end of a clip, and you can see it right there. Or you can put it between two clips. So putting it at the end of the clip will result in a fade out and putting it between two clips will result in a fade between those two clips. So they'll fade into each other. Now we're going to look at effects. So also from the effects panel, you go to video effects and we'll just grab a Gaussian blur. And so we drag that onto the clip and this little thing turns purple, it says effects to show we have an effect on it. But then how do we edit it? Well, to do that, you'll go back to the source monitor and there'll be effect controls. Now here, we can adjust a lot of things. Uh, and here we'll find Gaussian Blur, thing we just edited. And it has a toggle for blurriness, so we can make that more blurry. And of course you can do that for a multitude of effects. We can drag another effect and layer it on there, and you can see it added it just below here. Now onto animation. Animation is a little intimidating, but it can be quite simple. So the easiest thing to do is something like position or scale. So anything with one of these stopwatches can be animated. And what you want to do is bring your playhead to a point and just click a stopwatch. That makes this little marker here. Then you can move your playhead to another point and change this number. Let's zoom in. And then if we play back, it'll animate between those two positions. So at this point, it'll be at 100% and then it will start going to the new defined value. And that works for everything, position, rotation, including any effects. So we can also animate that blur effect. We can set it to zero blurriness here, and then maybe 50 blurriness here, and we'll see it animate from this point to this point see it's getting blurrier. So that's animation. Super simple, can have a great effect. 
You can do the same thing with audio as well. So if we go down to audio, can set audio level, and then over here, turn it down. This track doesn't have any audio, so we can't really show that, but you can see if we start playing, it begins showing you at what level it is between these two points, animating that. Another way to apply effects, other than applying them exactly to a clip, is with an adjustment layer. So if we go to our project, right click, new item, then click adjustment layer, it creates a transparent layer that we can put over all of our clips if we want to. And anything we apply to this applies to any of the layers underneath it without permanently changing them. So if we wanted this blur to be on this adjustment layer, then we can do that. So let's get rid of the animation, make the blur 100. And now, even though we did not add a blur to this fog wave clip, if we go over here, we can see that it's been blurred because of the adjustment layer. If we toggle off the adjustment layer, that turns it off. So a very nice way to do things like color grading and other things where you want to apply it to a large section without adjusting the clip itself. Next, we're going to add text. Super easy to do. It's here in this little panel. Just click the text button, click anywhere on the screen, and start typing. Going over to the effects panel, you can see the text layer we just created, and you're able to adjust all aspects of it. You can click the cursor tool to move it around, and you can change other things like the fill, And there we go. There are of course a lot more things you can do with text, but it's very easy to get started. Now we're on to exporting. So a Premiere project file can only be played in Premiere. You can't view it in any other way. For that, you need to export it. To export a video, you can go up to File, Export, Media. Now, if you click on the Format dropdown, you'll be kind of overwhelmed by the options, but for most cases, you're gonna want H.264. This will save it as an MP4 file, nice and compressed, plays on pretty much everything. But if you do need it for a specific use, then you might wanna browse and become familiar with these other options. Make sure you're exporting video and audio. It's usually best to match the source Usually you will want to export in the same format and same size and dimensions as your project. And there's some other settings here that you may need to change, but most likely everything is going to be fine just the way it is. You'll notice the output name is blue. If you click on that, you'll be able to decide where you want to save it and you can rename it. We're just going to keep it that name. Notice that it's the name of the timeline, which is one good reason to change it. And then we have two options, Q or export. If we export it, it will use Premiere Pro to do that. And if we Q it, it will use Adobe Media Encoder, which is a separate program. And we can queue up multiple files to render and they will render one after the other. The advantage of doing this is that we can still use Premiere Pro in the background. If we export, it will use Premiere Pro and you will not be able to close it. You will not be able to work on another project. Uh, in this case, we'll just export. And that's Premiere Pro in just about 15 minutes. It's super easy to get started with Premiere, even though there are a million and one things that you can do that are way more complex. But getting started, creating a simple edit, even with some animation, can be done in minutes. Let us know if you have any questions in the comments below or anything in specific that you want us to dive deeper into. We hope this inspired you to get started editing and have fun. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. And if you're looking for professional LUTs, Lightroom desktop and mobile presets, Premiere Pro templates, and more photo and video education, visit filtergrade.com today.